Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. I'm your host, Mike Thompson. This is the instrument rating course. Remember three things for your success. Number one, you should be studying this material in Epic's online instrument rating course. Number two, thanks for watching these videos to parallel that content. And number three, review all of this content one on one with your flight instructor. Our topic today, ice. Ice and icing. Icing on an aircraft can be extremely hazardous. Now, in order for icing to exist, two conditions must be present. Number one, there must be a visible moisture. Number two, the temperatures must be near or below freezing. Now, we generally categorize icing two ways. Where the ice forms, and that is instrument icing, induction icing, or structural icing. And then the second way that we categorize it is meteorologically, and that is how the ice forms, clear ice, rime ice, or mixed ice. When we talk about where it forms, in the diagram here, you can see we're talking about instrument icing, and we're concerned here about ice forming in, on, and around the pitot tube, the static port, and antennas on the aircraft. When we talk about induction icing, we're talking about ice forming in the induction system. And here we have an example of a carburetor and carburetor ice forming. And then when we talk about structural icing, we're talking about clear rime and mixed ice forming on the structure itself. That might be the wing, the propeller, the engine inlets, the empennage, et cetera. Now, when we think of structural icing, I am going to refer you to, and I know your instructor is going to do the same thing, an advisory circular number 91-74. Now, be sure to get the most current version of this advisory circular, 9174, and I want to remind you of two key things from that advisory circular. The first key thing is that in order for ice to form, this water, this moisture, must be super cooled. Now, I don't know if you've ever heard of this term before or thought about what that is or what it means. It's really not a superhero. <laughs> it actually is a condition where water remains in its liquid state below the freezing temperature. So water remaining liquid below 32 Fahrenheit or below zero centigrade, and you're thinking, is that actually possible? Yes, it is possible, and that's called supercooled water. The second main point I want you to take away from this advisory circular is when an aircraft flies through that supercooled water, the ice will form around the areas with the smallest radius first. Now, I want you to think of the radius on the leading edge of your propeller, all right? The radius on the leading edge of your empennage, your horizontal stabilizer. Okay, that's slightly larger. And the radius on the leading edge of your wing. Okay, that's the largest of the three. Now, if we're flying through supercooled water, where is it going to form first? It's going to form on the propellers and the antennas, maybe. Where is it going to form next? The empennage. That's the next largest radius. Where is it actually going to form last? On the largest radius, which is the wing. Now, this is going to come into focus in a few minutes when we talk about tail plane stalls and 
empennage icing. So let's review these three types of structural icing. Clear ice is exactly what it says. It's clear, just like an ice cube where you can almost see through it. And that's because there is very little or almost no air trapped in that moisture when it freezes. Now, this happens most typically right near freezing, even two degrees above freezing. So clear ice plus two to minus 10 degrees Celsius. Rime ice, let's jump to the bottom of our chart, forms at cooler temperatures minus 15 to minus 20 degrees Celsius. And this is the ice that looks more like frost and snow. It looks white. It is opaque. You can't see through it. What's going on there? There is a lot of air trapped in that ice, and that's rime ice. Well, what's the third type? Look at the middle of our chart, and we see that it is a mixture of both clear and rime ice, most typically from minus 10 to minus 15 degrees Celsius. Now, remember the four forces of flight? Lift, weight, thrust, and drag. I want you to imagine the worst case scenario. That might be a reduction in thrust and an increase in drag at the same time. Okay, that, that's not good. Guess what? That's exactly what icing will cause us. And imagine an increase in weight with a reduction in lift at the same time. And you're thinking, well, that's not good. And that is exactly what ice causes. In fact, a sandpaper thin layer of ice on your wing can reduce your lift produced by that wing by up to 30%. An increased drag by almost half up to 40%. Thicker layers of ice can result in even less lift and as much as an 80% increase in drag. So while I'm flying along, <clears throat> How am I going to detect structural icing? Structural icing may be difficult or even impossible to spot from the flight deck. However, certain flight characteristics give indications of ice accumulation. And you can see that here. We're showing an attitude indicator in normal level cruise flight. And then notice how I've had to pitch the aircraft up here in the attitude indicator shown on your left an abnormal level cruise attitude, and I'm thinking to myself, boy, something's going on here. That may be an indication of ice formation. So if I look out at my airplane now in a 172, if you look out the left window, you can see the wing strut, and you can see your pitot tube, on a lot of airplanes, especially jet-powered airplanes, where you're in the cockpit way in the front, you really can't see any portions of your airframe structure. So let's say I'm sitting in my 172 and I say to myself, well, I don't see any ice out there on that leading edge of the wing, but I am seeing a little bit of ice on that pitot tube. Now, remember advisory circular 9174? Where does it form first? on the smallest radius. So if I see it forming on the pitot tube, am I gonna see it form on the wing or is it gonna form on the empennage first? That's right, it will form on the empennage first. Now, remember the horizontal stabilizer is an airfoil that provides downward lift. It provides a downforce on the tail. You can see that in our diagram here, a quick review of longitudinal stability. Now, if the ice were to cause that empennage to stall, 
And that empennage could not provide that downward force. What am I going to feel? I'm going to feel a downward pitching moment and an abnormal elevator response, maybe some elevator vibrations. That is an indication that tailplane icing has already begun. So, what do I do if I have an inadvertent icing encounter? Now, we all know that the 172S model is prohibited from operating in known icing conditions. Yeah, we get that. And every once in a while, it's possible I may have an inadvertent encounter. Well, the first thing we do, turn the pedo heat on. The next thing we do, change course. If there was no icing back there, but now I'm getting into icing, one of my best courses of action will be to turn around. Here is an excerpt from Epic's checklist, and we're showing the inadvertent icing encounters. Pedo heat on, change course or altitude, cabin heat and defroster on. Now, some aircraft are equipped with systems that protect against ice. Again, looking back at AC 9174, we see that these are broken broadly into two categories, anti-ice and de-ice systems. What's the difference? Exactly what their name says. Anti-ice systems prevent the accumulation of ice on the aircraft. De-ice systems remove ice that has already accumulated on the aircraft. So let's take a look at a couple of these. This is a bleed air system or a thermal system that takes hot air from turbine engine compressors and heats the leading edge of the wing and other airfoils, such as the empennage and the engine inlets, to prevent the accumulation of ice. That's an anti-icing system. Another one shown here, what we call the wet systems or running wet systems, or you may hear it referred to as the weeping wing. Well, these wet systems use chemical agents to reduce the freezing point of contacting water. Chemical agents such as ethylene glycol and isopropyl alcohol that are sprayed out onto the propeller and or leading edges of wings and tail systems. How about the de-icing systems? Now, remember here the ice is already formed and these systems remove the existing ice. Pneumatic boots are common on aircraft. And in this diagram, you can see that these are inflatable membranes. There is a dedicated air pump or engine bleed air that's used to inflate that membrane. So we allow the ice to form initially on the membrane then we pump air into these tubes, those tubes expand, and the ice is cracked off. The other common de-icing systems are electrothermal. Boy, that's a pretty fancy word. You know what that means? A heating element. Yeah, so what am I going to do? Take my toaster and hook it up to the... Well, no, not exactly. But it's similar in the idea. We take this electric heating pad and it's glued to the surface, such as in this picture, you can see it glued to the leading edge of the propeller. And the system cycles on and off, lets the air accumulate, the pad is heated, the ice is melted, and thrown off. Now, what about on the venerable 172S model? Do we have anti- and de-icing systems? Now remember, while flight into known icing conditions is absolutely prohibited in the 172S, it is good to know what tools we have available to counter the threat of icing. And you can see two of those shown here. On your left, we're showing the pedo heater. And on your right, we're showing an alternate static air source 
valve. Review these with your flight instructor. Also, if you read the 172S POH carefully, you will find that, again, while flight into known icing conditions is prohibited, it is possible to add de-icing agents to the fuel. Now, these are agents such as isopropyl alcohol or diethylene glycol monomethyl ether. You want to hear me say that fast three times? These are fuel additives. Also, if you take a look at our pictures here, it might not be uh, apparent to you at first thought, but your cabin heater and your windshield defrosters that are shown here are anti and de-icing systems. Well, folks, that is an overview of aircraft icing and a few specifics about the venerable 172S. Join us next time.